everybody and welcome to our podcast on this morning of the 21st of November, otherwise known as Christ the King. And I begin as usual with the notices. Our next parish communion after today, which is the 21st, will be next Sunday the 28th at the usual time of 10 o'clock and it will be in the church hall at Pencoid. It's our cafe style service with breakfast baps available before the service. Please come along at 9.30 for breakfast and have a tea or coffee. We will also have a guest speaker, Owen Raymond, who will speak about the power of scripture to change people's lives in prison. Please contact me or Ian to book a place. Contact details will be on the website or in the parish magazine. The Church in Wales is still asking that we be careful when we hold services, so we are keeping to the one metre with a mask rule. And looking at the most recent numbers of infections and hospitalisations, it is obvious that we are not through the worst of this pandemic yet. So keep an eye on the weekly newsletter and the website, because as soon as we can open more normally, we will. It has been fantastic to finally hold services in church, and we want to do more, but we are being cautious to keep everyone safe. But watch this space. We are continuing to keep the churches open for private prayer after services in the building in which we had the service. However, as more people return to church and there is less need for private prayer, it will now run from about 11 o'clock after the service until 12 o'clock. So if you were not comfortable in the building with others, the opportunity for some choir prayer is still available. Our next Just Breathe service will be today at the usual time at half past three. And so if you want some quiet time to spend in the presence of God, listening to some readings and singing gently to some music, please come along and join us and contact me to reserve a place. Our next weekly Zoom coffee will be next Tuesday, the 23rd at 11 o'clock. It's a time to chat and sing with friends and like-minded people without leaving your own house. If you would like to join us, please get in contact with me or Ian and we will send you the details. And as usual, our contact details are on the Palace website or in the magazine. Now this week we had our first ministry area team meeting and things are looking positive and are finally beginning to move forward. There will be some more news given out shortly. And as usual, if you want paper copies of the Thought for the Week or the Open Church Prayer Sheet, please contact Judy who's working hard, getting them out to all who want them. And we will now have our reading for this week. This week's uh, reading comes from John chapter 18 verses 33 to 37. Glory to God our Saviour. <clears throat> Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus and asked him, are you the king of the Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate replied? Your own people and chief priest handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, my kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jewish leaders. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, Pilate, said Pilate. Jesus answered, you say I am a king. In fact, the reason I was born and came into the world is to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of truth listens to me. Praise to Christ our Lord. 
Thank you, Mel. And now we come to our thought for this week. Have you ever had one of those conversations where the other person doesn't get what you were saying? Perhaps when trying to explain something or put across your point of view. And sometimes it can appear that there are two people talking about two different things or talking side by side instead of together. And this is what seems to be going on in today's gospel reading. Pilate wanted what he would consider to be a straight answer. And Jesus gave him what he considers to be an answer, but Pilate just not getting it. Essentially, Pilate wanted Jesus to say, yes, he is a king, so that he could be crucified with no comebacks, or for Jesus to say, no, he is not a king, so that he could be released with no comebacks. Pilate wanted a clear-cut decision on which to base his actions, but he didn't get it. But maybe the problem is here is that they are both talking about different things, different ideas of what kingship should be. Pilate, of course, is expecting a king like Herod, with Jesus perhaps taking the throne by force, this is what happened in those days, unless the throne was passed from father to son. It was what Pilate was used to. It was just how things happened. Look at how many Roman emperors were forced out of their position by military might. And Jesus himself says that if he were a king in this world, his followers would be fighting to stop him being arrested, tried and executed. But of course, this isn't what Jesus was talking about. He was talking about another kind of kingship altogether. And Pilate just didn't get this. Pilate was so rooted in the physical society around him that he couldn't understand what Jesus was saying. We now know that Jesus was saying that his kingdom is the kingdom of heaven and that he had come only to tell people this so that they would believe and be saved, and that anyone who believed and recognised the truth would listen to him. That was why he was born. It was his reason for being alive. To Jesus, it was simple. To Pilate, it was completely outside his life experience and the perceived order of things. Does it feel like that to you if you try to explain your faith to people who do not share it. It seems that, like Pilate, people don't seem to grasp what is so obvious to us. People have certain expectations of what being a Christian is and cannot seem able to get beyond them. And as you know, I work part-time as a prison chaplain. But the officers and other staff have no idea what a chaplain represents or does. They seem to think that being a chaplain means you spend all your time praying in the chapel, emerging to take a service on Sunday until something goes wrong and the chaplain is called in to deal with a situation that the officers don't know how to deal with. Like someone's distressed that the news a close relative or friend has died, or to break the news that a relative or friend has died. But the bottom line is people don't understand faith. But that only reflects the attitudes in society as a whole. Many people think that as Christians, we think we are superior because we go to church. What they don't understand is that we go because we know we are not perfect and that we know we need the forgiveness because we do get things wrong. And we go because we are aware that there is something greater than us, bigger and more wonderful. And we go to church to acknowledge that. People also seem to think that we are holier than thou and don't do anything wrong, like swear or drink a glass of wine. The number of people in the prison who apologise for even mild swearing is incredible. 
I appreciate it as a mark of respect, but it can really hold up a conversation when they are worried about every word they say. Wouldn't it be wonderful if they had that respect for everyone, not just for chaplains or people they think are Christians? And of course, there is the expectation that Christians should have easy lives. You know how the argument goes. If God was able to do all these things, why doesn't he look after his followers? They don't get the fact that Jesus never promised his followers an easy life. In fact, he told them to pick up your cross and follow me. Knowing what the cross meant, that it meant a cruel death, it is hardly an invitation to a life full of fun and games. But what he did promise us is that we would be given the strength to deal with the difficulties that come our way. As long as we have faith, we know that he will be with us even in the darkest of times. But just as we know what we mean when we talk about faith, Jesus knew exactly what his mission was. And he states it in simple words that can easily be understood. He says that he has come into the world to testify to the truth. This was probably beyond Pilate's understanding, just as it is too many today. Pilate was so embedded in the materialism and the politics of his day that something that was beyond this, that was beyond the physical life that he knew, something that would lead to eternal life, was completely beyond his comprehension. And it is to many today. Society is so caught up in the need to get more stuff, more things, and in having a good time, that they cannot appreciate that there could be something beyond that, that could be even better. They only think of the short term, only of this life, and not what may come after. They don't listen to the voice of Jesus until something happens. A friend of mine once said that everyone becomes a Christian when the double-decker bus is just two feet away and travelling fast. Sadly, this is probably right. But bargaining with God at the last minute is not good enough. You need to believe and trust and repent before you try to ask God for anything. We as Christians know that our prayers are sometimes answered in a totally unexpected way, sometimes in a way that we don't understand, as if we and God are working from two different perspectives, like Jesus and Pilate. But we do know that we are listening and trying to understand, and that God will do what is best for us, even if we don't recognise it at the time. Amen. And now we come to our questions for this week. Have you had a conversation about faith that seems to go nowhere? What confusions about being a Christian have you come across? How do you feel when someone says, I envy you your faith? And finally, do you think of Jesus? as a king. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that you are our king, that you are the Lord of heaven and earth, and that you give all good things to your people, to those of us who have faith, and to those of us who follow in your truth. And we thank you for all this, Lord. We pray that you keep us Help us to keep faithful to you, now and forever. Amen. And we're now going to have our hymn for today, quite appropriate, Crown Him With Many Crowns.
Well, have a good day and have a go good week and speak to you soon. Bye.